Welcome in to another bonus episode here at Hockey Inside Out. Logan Mayu, former first-round pick of the Montreal Canadiens. Does he have a future with this organization moving forward? Rick Green, you were down in London in February. You got to see him play firsthand. 25 goals, 28 assists for the product playing for London. Listen, uh, you know, and also, you know, speaking with Mark Hunter about him, he's uh, he's a good player, and he's he's got, you know, incredible potential to be a good uh, NHL player, but that's going to mean nothing unless Gary Bettman says, let's uh, let's turn the page and give this kid an opportunity to, get, to play in the NHL. But it's been really quiet on that front, and I, I haven't uh, really heard anything other than, you know, he's been doing his counseling thing, and that's gone well. Uh, but he's a really good player, and he's he, it got to the point where he, during the game that I did see him, uh, he was like, you know, doing just all he had to do he could have done more but he's like had a little bit in cruise control because it was too easy for him so that being said uh, uh you know there, there's a guy with the the ability to to move up the ladder and be be a good player at a higher level but it doesn't mean anything uh unless he gets the green light uh, uh to, to have an opportunity to to play in the nhl and it's i hope he does i hope that um you know he's he's paid his his dues so to speak and uh, he's given a second chance and is, you know, is allowed to uh, carry on with his life. And uh, he's admitted to making a very, very poor decision. He's, uh, he's sought counseling. Now let's, uh, let's give this, this kid a chance to, uh, to move forward and, you know, uh, have an opportunity. In, in an ideal world, Logan Mayu would make the NHL and he could be the, the face of, you know, the NHL or hockey in general and hockey cultures fight, like push back against its culture problem with, uh, with, with sexual assault, sexual harassment, and, and all of that, you know, overarching, those overarching issues, he could be a leader in that arena, right? Uh, not to mint, like not even on the ice, uh, a leader for the sport in general. That would be great. Uh, from everything we're hearing, it seems like he's doing the work to get to that point. But unfortunately, the situation that he's put himself in is he not only has to prove himself on the ice, is he has to really prove himself off the ice consistently and, and make no more, uh, I don't want to say mistakes because I don't think it was a mistake. As uh, Rick said, it was a decision, make no more poor decisions uh, in his future. He's, he's got to be very careful. He's got to be in the right mindset. He's got to be truthful in uh, addressing the issues ahead of him. But he does seem to have talent. Uh, earlier in the year, he was, like, from what I saw, from what I heard from scouts, a lot of issues with his game. He's still a guy who has to focus a lot more on playing without the puck and being in the right positions. He can score goals, no doubt. He led the OHL among all defensemen in goals of 25, one more than the next guy behind him, despite playing 10 fewer games. So there, there's a goal scorer there from, from the back end for sure. There's talent. But whether he can put that all together and keep his mind in the right spot and be a leader in that arena, that's a lot to put on any young player. So I, I think I look at him and I still see a significant project, a guy who's probably going to spend a couple of years in the American Hockey League uh, after he graduates from junior. And we have to remember also, like like a lot of guys in the OHL, a lot of guys in junior, he missed a full year of development because of COVID. So patience is a virtue in this situation, and I mean all situations with prospects, but especially with with Logan Mayu, I think we got to pump the brakes a tiny bit from from the hype machine of the goal scoring, and remember that he's got to work on his game on and off the ice. Yeah, I'm certain he will play in the NHL, and I'm pretty certain it'll be with the Canadians. Uh, Gary Bett, when he was in Montreal a few months ago, was asked about it, and he said we haven't had to make that decision yet because he hasn't. The Canadians haven't asked if he can play in the NHL. So once he's ready to play in the NHL, the Canadians will go to the Gary Bettman and see if they get permission. I, and I, I think he will get it. And I think he deserves to get it because he's paid. You know, he he, uh, he made a re- did a really dumb thing, uh, a stupid thing. It was hurtful, um, but he's paid a price. I mean, he you know he 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 was went to court in, in Sweden and he was paid the sentence or the fine that he had to pay there. He was suspended by the OHL. This story will follow him for the rest of his life. 
Uh, it's not like it's going to be forgotten. It'll always be on you know, paragraph three or whatever of a story is what happened. Uh, that's a have that he's got to carry that. Uh, he's a young guy. He's done uh, speaking with Jeff Molson in a one on one interview I had with him. I asked him about Mayu, and he said, you know, he's, he's a good kid who made a really did a really dumb decision, and but he's paid a price, and, and at some point you got to give him a second chance and and let him move on. And I think it it probably will. I mean, I'm certain he will play in the NHL. And I think it probably will be with the Canadians because it's just Molson said he's done everything the team has asked them to do since then. Um, you know, the Canadians, here's a kid who also said he didn't want to be drafted that year. He said he didn't felt he deserved to be drafted and he wanted to prove he could be a better person. The Canadians ignored his request uh, and were surprised by the blowback they got, which is a bit shocking that they didn't expect the blowback that they would get. But again, he, he, he was a young kid when this happened. Uh, he has paid a price that will follow him for the rest of his life. Uh, and it's time to move on. It's, it's he's, you know, he's done everything right, but as you're right, Andrew, it's going to be a very short leash for him moving forward as far as uh, his uh, off ice conduct and how he handles himself. And he could be, if there's one good thing, and I've written this before that came out of this story, it maybe made a lot of younger people, not just hockey players, just realize that the things you do on social media, the things you post on the phone, the things you share, they can come with a price. You know, there's consequences for actions. And this might have been a real eye-opener for a lot of other young hockey players maybe thinking about doing similar things to realize that doing dumb stuff like that comes with a heavy price. And Logan Mayo has, has paid a, a significant price for what he did, and he deserves it. Um, but, uh, but again, I, 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 be, I think he'll play in the NHL. I'm sure it's just um, – uh, once the Canadians or whatever team decides they, they want to bring them up to the NHL, they'll ask the NHL for permission. And I'd be very surprised if they don't get it. Quickly here, guys, aside from the off-ice issues with, with Mayu, looking long-term, what's his ceiling if he were to crack this Habs lineup down the road in, say, three, four years from now? Is he a three or four, maybe a two, or maybe a one with what he's done in junior and how he's developed so far? I mean, I mean, look, so, sorry, Stu, I was just going to say, if you look at the depth chart, I mean, obviously uh, he hasn't proven anything at the NHL level and uh, will be given, hopefully, an opportunity to show his worth. And, you know, from that point, you'll get a better reading on where he stacks up. But I, I, I believe, uh, from what I'm hearing, he has all the tools. You, you know, you maybe you talk about in uh, his defensive game a, a little bit. One thing... Uh, will never change is you can teach guys how to play defense. You can't teach guys how to make things happen offensively. So uh, bonuses for this young man. Um, and, you know, like I said, great potential moving forward. Uh, now we just have to wait for the green light and, and give this kid a second chance and let him uh, show his worth. And then uh, that'll dictate just, you know, how he stacks up in the depth chart uh, at this point. But he has, he has all the tools. I mean, I've only seen... He has the advantage of being right-handed, uh, so that bumps him up the Canadians' depth chart significantly because he doesn't have to compete with guys like Caden Gooley, Jordan Harris, Arbor Jacki, many others, Mike Matheson, for example. But at the same time, like there are limitations in Mayu's game where you know like, his vision is not spectacular. You know, like the, the goal scoring is there, but a lot of those goals are junior goals, right, that aren't necessarily going to beat NHL goaltenders. So you can pump 25 goals through, like, a 17-year-old goaltender, but doing that against an NHL goaltender is a little bit different, especially from the back end, especially with the way the game has changed, where you don't really necessarily want your defenseman shooting the puck a ton. That's kind of going the way of the dodo. We watched the Canadians play the Carolina Hurricanes recently, and, yeah, the Hurricanes put 50 shots on goal, and about five of them were dangerous because they just – they're a perimeter team uh, without Pacioretty, without Sveshnikov. They have nobody really that shoots through the middle. So it, it was really, they were looking for broken plays and that was it. So that kind of Brent Burns style Gatling gun from the point is not as effective as it once was. So he's going to have to find different areas of his game to improve on to be an NHL caliber player in the first place. I think moving up into the top four, you know, he's going to have to improve significantly in a lot of areas. So I still see him as a third pairing guy with uh, maybe potential to move up higher just because of his offensive skill, but he's got to bring the rest of his game along as well. Yeah, knock on him has been his defensive play, but as you mentioned, Rick, you can teach someone how to play defense. You can't teach size either. This kid's a big kid. He's got a big, big shot. 
uh, which is something that could help the Canadians on their power play, which needs a lot of help. Um, so it's hard as a, a kid his age, it's hard to predict exactly where he might slot in. But um, yeah, I mean, that, you could see him as a bottom th- uh, a bottom pairing guy or, or and a guy with that big shot on the power play. It, it could help. Well, we'll find out for Logan Mayu's future what will hold for him as a Montreal Canadian if he'll be with this team or not in the next couple of years. Uh, don't forget to submit your questions and comments here on Hockey Inside Out. We look forward to conversing about that on a future episode. And check out the YouTube page for Hockey Inside Out. And also, the newsletter. Head on by MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters. And for full episodes and bonus content, head on by Hockey Inside Out. On behalf of Stu, Andrew, and Rick, wish you a great week. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.